Praise God. Welcome to Fresh Word. The Lord Johnson Spears here from King and Church House of Prayer. Uh, we're delighted to be with you. We're doing a series called Lift Jesus Up. And we just thank God. Uh, he's given us ways to do that. We didn't try to give a, a list um, uh, that was a conclusive list. There are other ways to lift Jesus up. But we brought out uh, a couple of points on how to lift Jesus up. The last one we talked about, of course, was speaking the word of God. Speaking the word of God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And the one we're going to talk about this week, which is probably the final one that I'll talk about, is giving, giving, giving. Giving speaks. When you give from the heart, it speaks. When you're in the family of God and God endows you with uh, abundance, uh, not necessarily uh, money, but abundance in the spirit. There's some true riches that cannot be measured by money. But we know we need it on this earth. We, we have to make exchange to get products, uh, different items that we must use to, to live, to exist. So, so money has its place. Uh, but God really highlighted giving that speaks, that people know that you're different. Uh, they know when it comes from the heart. And when you give from the heart, those people that receive from you, it speaks to them. They want to know who you are and who your God is. And a lot of people have gotten saved because they were given to first. They were given to while they were still in their sin. And they wanted to know more about Jesus, that he would touch the heart of someone uh, that would give unto them even when they were in their sinful state. Uh, remember the young man, uh, I believe he was a paraplegic and the four uh, picked him up and said, we got to get him to Jesus. They had so much faith and they would not be denied. There was such a crowd there at the front of the house. They couldn't get through. They tore the roof down. Can you imagine that? Wanting to get, had so much faith. Jesus is going to heal him that they tore another person who was not their room, tore it up and got that young man before Jesus. Jesus gave. Jesus gave like he gives to all of us. Uh, gave him that ability to walk again. Healed his body and uh, told that man after he healed his body, now you go and sin no more. Now you go and sin no more. So God many times will move in, uh, with mercy. And he'll move with compassion through his people to let them know, I love you. I love you now, even before you're cleaned up. I love you now, even in your sin. And so that speaks volumes to those that receive it. Sometimes uh, Jesus was a great giver. He's our teacher. Uh, he, he took care of their needs, the people who wanted to hear the word so bad. He did not want them to leave unless they were fed. They were hungry, and he did not want them to leave unless they were fed. And we know the parable of the two fish and the five loaves of bread and how prayer, just praying, uh, multiplied it, and the people were fed, and they had all these baskets that were left over. We give God the glory. God takes care of us that way. Oh, we know we have not arrived. We know that even since we've uh, been saved, we've made mistakes. We know that. And God's word is so full of mercy and grace. Uh, I don't think we're there. Maybe you are. But most Christians are just not on that level where they look through the lens of mercy and grace. And they, and they say, like Jesus said, if you sin, you're to confess your sin. And I'm faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You know, sometimes we don't do that. We want people to be beat up over their sin. We want them um, to be gotten. Lord, get them, get them, get them. That's not God's heart. He He, he uh, gives mercy. He gives grace freely. And we've been on the other end of that, if we're honest. We've received his mercy and grace so many times, even since we've been saved. So we want to talk about the heart of giving and how it gets God's attention 
and he's lifted up. He's lifted up, and people see the light of God, and they're drawn unto him when his family acts like Jesus Christ. We're so blessed. Uh, one scripture, Luke 6 and 38, says, If we give, it's going to be given back unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over will uh, God give into our bosoms. Uh, another thing about giving, God wants us to be private now. If he wants to shine the light on it, he will. But he does not want us going around boasting, I gave this, I gave that. The heart is not right. I'm not sure he's going to receive that as a gift back towards you. Because that's his nature. If we give and help people, he takes care of us. He takes care of what we need to be taken care of. But if it's a boast and you're saying, oh, I did this, I did that, I did that, I believe you can destroy what God wants to do for you. Okay, and then remember the rich young ruler who approached Jesus and he was just like, uh, you know, I've done all the commandments. What do I need? I don't know what was in his heart about that. Uh, and, 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 and Jesus was very clear to him. See, he knows us. He knows what I need to get rid of. He knows what I need to hold on to. He knows when something is in my flesh, my soulless realm is leading it, is not spiritual, is not from the heart. He knows that even if I don't know it, if I don't know my motive, God knows my motive. And he told that young man, he knew the young man's heart probably better than the young man. What you need to do is you need to give all of your wealth away and give it to the poor. You need to sell it and give it to the poor. And it was very staggering for him. He literally let Jesus know, I can't do that. I can't do that. I want to encourage you today to be a giver. And every penny you have that you think belongs to you, none of it belongs to you. It's all God. You're just a steward. It's not yours in the first place. So if he tells you to give it away, if he tells you to bless somebody, uh, we need to just say, yes, Lord. And if it's hard to do, Lord, help me. He doesn't mind us asking for help. Lord, help me. I know it's yours, but this is hard because I had plans. <laughs> and so when we yield and surrender to the Lord, when we truly receive just that spirit of humility, and we want to walk in humbleness, then, then we've got to really, even in the face of money, we need to yield to the Spirit of God. That young man, I don't know, did not know. Uh, you know, it was not printed back then. That if he gave, he was going to get it back. He was going to get 30, 60, even 100 fold, possibly in this earth, on this earth, during the season that he lived in. He didn't know the uh, teaching concerning giving. Maybe that was it. He thought he'd just be poor for the rest of his life if he gave it all away. Whatever the case was, he walked away from Jesus. And that's something you don't ever want to do. Not for a penny, not for a dollar. You don't want to walk away from Jesus. You want to walk continuously towards Jesus. You want to yield to Jesus. You want to yield to whatever he's telling you. you you need to do because you've already been bought with a price. You belong to God. And at the end of the day, this is not our home. This is not our home. This is just temporary. You want to do what the Spirit of God is telling you to do. I'm not saying it's going to be easy all the time. But giving opens a door for the Spirit of God to really reveal himself fully. And there are a lot of people who can testify that they know Jesus better because somebody gave unto them. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'm going to draw all men unto myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at the life of Mother Ch Teresa. She just sacrificed her, her, her life. She said, I'm going to be a gift to these people in, in India who need help. I'm going to give my life. I'm going to present my life as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. I believe the Lord put it in her heart. That's Romans 12 and 1. I do believe the Lord put it in her heart to just give her life to those people that were so sick 
in India and she just took care of them to the best of her ability. And she just gave her life to those people. Um, don't forget the type of the offering. I believe sometimes God has organized the way he has an economy system. He has an economic system of how the church is supposed to be uh, um, run financially. And he's given it in his word first, the tithe, and then the offering, which is above the tithe, be led of the spirit. We talked about Luke 6 and 38. If we give, God is saying it's going to come back. Uh, when we tithe, we talked about Luke 11 and 42. I believe last week, it says, don't stop tithing, but cling to the weightier matters. You know, learn about God in the weightier areas, such as unconditional love. We want to just embrace unconditional love and be sure that you're not walking in anything. You're walking in love because that's the foundation for everything. God is love. Paul said, let me show you a more excellent way. Um back there the first lesson that we talked about lift jesus up said to intentionally be full of the holy ghost and well if you are not uh walking in love it, it's just not going to work and paul said i show you a more excellent way and that is to walk in the love of god to receive the love of god and let it shine through you okay so in the area of giving many times that's the way god loves he loves, and sometimes the word love is not mentioned. My mother used to say love is what it does. So there's a light that's going to flow through that process of exchange. Well, you find a stranger, and you know that stranger is hungry. He doesn't even have to tell you. The Holy Spirit lets you know. And you don't stop until you go to Burger King or somewhere, and you get some food back to that person. That's lifting Jesus up. And the one that was hungry is going to see the glory of God. He's going to need more than that one hamburger yet. And, 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 and that may start a relationship where you're able to get them some help. But don't forget that the true giving, that true process of giving comes from God himself. Because he loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. You talk about giving. That he, you know, Jesus became sin for us. He bought us back. He paid us. He paid for us. He, he signed the note himself with his blood. We don't have to pay for anything. Jesus has already done it. So when we give, we're lifting up Jesus. When we give in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord told me to come back and do this for you. I have to give you these clothes, my coat, because God told me to do it. We're lifting up Jesus, and those people are going to be drawn unto him. Many of them will not miss the light of his glory that's on your life. So I want you to continue to give. I want you to continue to give. There may be someone out there that's not a part of this family, the family of God. I often say, join the family. He sent you an invitation years ago. I don't know what you did with your invite, but he's here again tonight. And he's saying, uh, would you come into my family? Would you be a part of my family? Uh, I'm your shield and your buckle. I'm your high tower. Let me be Let me be God for you. Be a part of the family. So if you are not in, 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 in the family of God, let's pray this prayer. You repeat after me and let God know you really want to be a part. And I believe something will happen right now. I really do. That's what my faith is for you. And um, repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I give my life to you. I confess all of my sins. I ask you to make me aware of those that maybe I'm not aware of. Sins of commission, omission, sins of, of my thought life, my motivation. Any sin, God, I confess it as sin. I ask you to forgive me. Uh, for my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I ask you to wash me and make me whole. I ask you to allow me to be a part of your family, your family, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. Oh, make me whole, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Teach me your way. 
in Jesus Christ. Holy name, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. If you repeat it after me, if you pray that prayer, I do believe that you're in the family of God. Now, I want you to be, begin to study the Bible because God encouraged us to study his word. And uh, St. John is a good book to start in because it talks about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It gives you that relationship that we all have to learn. Uh, we'll just understand salvation even better after we study the book of John. And, and, and also get into a, a, a Bible teaching church so that you will learn more and more. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We invite, invite you to be with us next week with fresh word. Amen.